Well, greetings out there on YouTube land and welcome to today's video in which we will discuss every step in the production of your own home-built tremolo overdrive boost unit. This will include a schematic and wiring diagrams for the unit that you see right here. Uh, this project holds a special place in my heart because this was the very first uh, guitar-related electronic item that I ever built. I made this several years ago and I think you'll find that it's a, t a tiny bit crude and simple compared to some of the more modern offerings. Uh, but it is a perfect project for those of you out there who want to get started in your own home building uh, of electronic devices but aren't quite ready to do a full-blown amplifier yet. First, we'll review the schematic for the project, and then I'm going to take this one uh, apart and show you step-by-step step how I built my version of this unit. First off, I want to give full credit to the individual who designed this circuit and then uh, made the schematics and wiring diagrams uh, available on the internet to all of us who would like to build one of them. His name is Rick Campbell and his company is Rick Tone Amplifiers. Back in the late 1980s, Mr. Campbell started making uh, custom-built guitar amplifiers and um, he follows the same philosophy I do, that knowledge is meant to be shared and not necessarily at a profit. And as a result, he has made available on the internet for free uh, schematics and wiring diagrams for many of his designs. I will include a link in the video description so that you can go to the site and download this specific uh, schematic and also the wiring diagrams for this project. So please keep in mind, I'm merely the messenger uh, here and he is actually the person who created this circuit and made it available to us. Also, both he and I would like to emphasize to you that construction of any electronic circuit uh, has certain hazards and dangers involved. Do not undertake this project unless you have studied up on safe handling of electronic devices and will carefully exercise all of these safe handling practices when you are uh, creating this circuit. Because let's face it, there's nothing like electrocution to take the fun out of a project. And just to be sure, I'm going to throw in a couple of very simple rules that you need to follow. Make sure that at no time you are ever in direct contact with the ground. Be sure you're wearing rubber sole shoes. Uh, say you're standing on uh, a rug between you and the cement slab in your workshop. Because simply touching anywhere in the primary circuit with one hand could kill you if you were grounded. Number two, once you're dealing with the secondary circuit, keep one hand in your pocket if you're dealing with the circuit while it is energized. This is to ensure that you only touch the uh, components within the secondary circuit with the one hand to avoid completing a circuit through your body with possible lethal results. You have to be sure that the filter caps are thoroughly drained before you touch any part of the secondary circuit, even after the amplifier is turned off. And probably the simplest rule is touch nothing that is metal with your skin when the amplifier is energized and for several minutes after it's turned off. Now with all the scary stuff aside, uh, let's move on to the, a schematic review. Okay, up here we're going to see a full wave voltage doubler power supply. Hopefully you've watched my part 4 video in the power supply video series and you will understand how this works. Here are the two 12 to 120 volt transformers and uh, also added uh, is a pilot lamp, a single pole single throw on off switch, and a fuse to the primary circuit. Be sure you use a three wire grounded power cord with the green wire securely connected to the chassis. Here are the two diodes 
and electrolytic capacitors which form the doubler network. In addition, we see a high value resistor to ground, a medium value high wattage resistor in series just before the uh, 33 microfarad filter capacitor uh, that helps to smooth the output from our doubler network. The net output uh, high voltage will be uh, on this diagram around 210 volts positive DC. If yours puts out a little more than that then you can uh, reduce the value of this resistor to bring it down. If you come out on the low end you could increase this, the value of this resistor to bring it up a bit. Now let's look at the remainder of the Richtone Tremor Drive circuit. Over here we have the guitar input jack which is self grounding. Over here we have the output to the amplifier which is not self grounding. There is a bypass switch right here that when you flip it you will go from the signal input directly to the signal output bypassing this unit. So it will be like the unit does not exist when this bypass switch is closed. So you're going to plug your guitar uh, cable into this end and then you're going to have a short cable uh, that goes from this output jack to the input of your amplifier. Now when the bypass switch is open the signal is going to pass through our circuit before it exits to our amplifier. We see here a 12 AX7 tube which we know consists of two separate triodes. The first triode will be another pre-amplification stage. The second triode is going to be used as a tremolo oscillator. So when the bypass switch is open we have a choice of either uh, engaging an additional preamp stage which will greatly boost the output from our amplifier or we can engage the tremolo oscillator to give us a really nice uh, tremolo effect or we can do both. This additional uh, preamp stage will allow you to overdrive the tubes in your amplifier uh, at a much lower volume level uh, and much easier than you ever could before. Let's trace the signal as it passes through the circuit. Uh, our guitar input signal will come through the typical grid blocker resistor, pass the grid leak resistor which establishes the bias within the tube. Uh, it will be applied to this grid of the first uh, 12AX7 triode and then the signal will be greatly amplified and output through the plate which is operating at 140 volts well within the limits of our power supply and then will be output over here to a volume control which will amount to a drive control and then sent to the input of our amplifier. Thus even if your amplifier does not have a drive control as it is now which we know will allow us to overdrive the preamp section and have uh, distortion at a lower volume uh, now you will with this unit. The second stage is the uh, tremolo oscillator which we see has the typical three capacitors in a loop between the grid and the plate. If you're at all uncertain about how this works I have created uh, videos showing exactly how tremolo oscillators work so please check them out for clarification. Our tremolo circuit will have a depth control, a speed control, and also an on off control so that we can operate the unit with just the boost or just the tremolo or both. When the tremolo is engaged it will modulate the output from our boost triode and will it'll be very much like you grab the volume control on your guitar and turn it up down up down up 
down. So we have the typical tremolo modulation being applied to the input signal of the amp. Now this is much earlier than virtually any tremolo signal will ever be applied in a circuit. Generally it's applied to either the output tubes or to the phase inverter, but in this case we're applying it to the input of the amplifier. So uh, this is capable of producing a really profound tremolo effect. If you recall in my Supro Tremover build, uh, part of the appeal of it was the early insertion of the tremolo signal into that circuit. And I think uh, if you listen to it, you'll have to agree it had a really nice tremolo effect. Well, so will this unit. Naturally, I'm going to provide a demonstration of both the boost and tremolo effect uh, so you can draw your own conclusions before we start building the unit. Here's Jack rooting through his toy box in lieu of doing any work. Jack, is there any way I can get you to help me with this tremolo drive video series? No, well, guess not. Okay, I'm going to use that little Fender Champ clone that I built from scrap parts as our test amp. I've got the Trim Boost unit right beside it, on and in bypass mode. So let's see what the amp sounds like by itself. Okay, I think we can agree that's a fairly clean output tone. Now let's engage the tremolo and see how that works. Okay, this is at a medium speed and a kind of moderate intensity. Now we'll be at the same speed, but at a much higher intensity. Okay, here's the tremolo at a fairly high speed and uh, say about a 7 out of 10 intensity. And here is a tremolo at a low speed and high intensity. Now I'm going to up the boost uh, to about, oh, like, say, 2 out of 10 and uh, a medium uh, intensity on the tremolo. Now let's turn the boost up to about halfway and turn off the tremolo. Now I'm going to turn down the amp volume a bit, back to the original volume levels, even though the boost is on now uh, at about halfway. Now we'll crank up the boost just a little bit more and see what type of distortion we can get at a moderate volume. Here again is the boost cranked up and the amp volume cranked down. Well, 
What About Does It? in this first video in the series on how to build your own Riptone Trema Drive unit. If this seems like an interesting addition to your guitar and amplifier arsenal, uh, or if you just like the challenge of building uh, your first electronic device, then please stay tuned for part two, uh, in which we will dissect the one here that I've built and look inside and uh, maybe give you some pointers or ideas on how you can set up your own build. Meanwhile, I suggest that you download the schematic and the wiring diagrams and uh, compare them to my review and your own and see what you think. Uh, so if all this sounds good, then I hope to see you in part two. Thanks for watching and bye for now. Okay, here's a follow-up on Rusty's previous exam. Uh, in this case, I have one full cookie and three pieces, but as you can see, it's less than a full cookie. Let's see if he goes for the uh, more pieces or the easier to chew pieces because the chewing's already started or if he has sense enough to go for the larger portion. Okay, here's our test subject and he's ready to make his choice. Sniffing the trio, sniffing the big cookie, snorting, stretching, generally stalling, and come on Rusty, make your choice. Which is it gonna be? Oh, he went for the three. So it isn't greed, it's ease of eating, I think, that he's going for. 